You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Mark Mandel. Mark is not only a graduate of the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, where actually my brother went, but uh, he and I are old kind colleagues from the old country. Uh, we both grew up in Scarsdale, it turns out, and uh, followed a very similar path in terms of our investment advisory career. I guess the big difference is that I went to the east towards Israel, and he went to the west towards Boulder, Colorado. And now he has his own radio show as the chairman of Financial Services Company. He has Wall Street Radio. So, Mark, I'd like to welcome you. Douglas, it's great to be here. Thank you. Listen, I just want to ask you, on your radio show, how, how do you help investors succeed in the stock market? Well, you know, first off, it's about education. The more educated people are, the better and more they will succeed. And so we teach people about how to successfully approach the market. Now, our focus is on technical analysis. There's a difference. There's fundamental analysis and there's technical analysis. Okay, you better you know, take a minute and just – I'm sorry. Go ahead and describe or define each of these. Sure. Fundamental analysis is a macroeconomic – Financial ratios, you talk about management, you talk about valuation, P.E. ratios, things like that. Fundamental information, earnings, and basing a valuation on the earnings and the growth rate of a company. Technical analysis is the study of price and volume. The law of economics is the law of supply and demand. Now, supply and demand is the key to an asset going up or down. It's the key to price. So basically, supply or sellers, demand or buyers. So we are using technical analysis to study price, volume, psychology, and patterns repeat. So technical analysis is about the study of what insiders, smart money, hedge funds, people who have information before it's made public are doing, buying and selling. So we're studying what people are doing with information before it's announced. Mm -hmm. Price always leads news. So we gain an edge by using technical analysis and understanding what's happening with the particular stock or the market based on the pattern. Are you suggesting that someone else is trading with some sort of advanced knowledge? Absolutely. Wall Street is manipulated. Wall Street is a rigged game. <laughs> The U.S. stock market is for sure. Isn't it too and big for that? Or are there laws against it? There are laws against it, but the laws are not enforced. And we see it all the time, all the time. I mean, we just had a hedge fund manager uh, who used to be on the board of Goldman Sachs um, just was charged and convicted of insider trading. That's just the tip of the iceberg. It's done all the time. And <sighs> – the problem is investors are behind the eight ball. Investors really don't have a chance if they're relying on information because the information is about what has happened. Wall Street, the stock market, is about discounting the future. It's about what's going to happen. There's no way we can predict the future. So the key to technical analysis is it shows us what people who know are doing, the buying and the selling. And it gives us an advantage. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So do you have a sense of whether – is this only for short-term or is this really for long-term trading? No, no, it's long-term. It, it depends on the time frame because we use charts, daily charts, weekly charts, uh, hourly charts, minute charts. The shorter term the chart, the shorter term your time horizon. So there's three types of investors. There's the day trader who's trading in and out during the day. There's the swing trader, person who holds their positions two weeks, two months, and there's the investor who holds for six months to a year. And by the way, we have found 
that day trading doesn't work. It's very difficult for people to day trade. Mm-hmm. You have to make too many right decisions emotionally. You have to be really on, you know, stable and not be affected by emotions. Um, it's like gambling, and it's very popular in America, but it's not aligned to how people can truly be successful in the market. We think you have to identify the trend the long-term trend, and then invest with that trend. And so be an investor. Holding positions is much more aligned to what's good for people and a way for them to make money in the market. You're saying to hold these positions only for a couple of weeks to the, for the swing? Well, you know, I would say two weeks, two months to two years. It depends on the time frame. I'll give you an example. Back in March – of 08 when the market bottomed um, we bought Las Vegas Sands a casino stock uh, at three dollars a share we sold it at five dollars a share thinking we were geniuses <laughs> it went to fifty five dollars a share oh my gosh had we been an investor we would have made you know 200 times on our money instead we were traders and we gave you know we gave away all those profits. I can give you example after example that had we held positions and just been an investor and been patient, we would have made so much money, so much more money than by trading and taking short-term profits. Now we're in a bull market in America. We're in a, you know, a major bull market that we believe has many more months, maybe years to go. It's because of low interest rates. It's because of easy money. And the Fed, the U.S. Federal Reserve Board, is behind this market, and they're the wind behind the sails of the market. So as long as the trend is higher, people who invest, who hold positions, should succeed. Okay, we are talking to Mark Mandel. Mark is the chairman of the financial services company. He's got a radio show based in Boulder, Colorado called Wall Street Radio, and he specializes in teaching people about how to invest money, and he's very focused on education. So tell me something, Mark, what is it about education, or how much education can the average guy really get to make him a successful trader as opposed to, let's say, buying index funds or mutual funds? Well, that's a great point. And basically, if the person wants to be empowered, they want to be involved, they want to um, take control of their financial future, education is really important. And I'm talking about education about how the markets work, education around being an investor, identifying trends, staying with the trends, identifying patterns in the market that repeat. That's the education part. If someone doesn't want to be empowered or involved and they just want to, you know, leave their money to a money manager or a financial planner, that's a totally different approach. In that sense, just buying an index fund probably is the best way to go or having their money managed by someone who has a good track record is a good way to go. So the education is really for people who want to be involved in their own financial uh, future and making decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to something you mentioned before about the U.S. being in a bull market. There's certainly – that in fact, could be defined as a very controversial statement because any time you turn on Bloomberg, there's always going to be some incredible doomsayer who, in fact, seems to be saying things that are reasonable. For example, uh, the U.S. is suffering from a huge debt, uh, both on the national level as well as on the individual level. How do you see that uh, corresponding with your bull market feeling? Well, again, our focus is on price. Our focus is on what the market does, not what people think it will do. Um, There's an old saying on Wall Street, it's the news is not important. It's how stocks react to the news. Mm -hmm. So as a matter of fact, bull markets do climb a wall of worry. So the more negative people are, the better it is for the bull market. And so basically we're in a situation now where – It's really fueled by easy money and um, low interest rates. And until that changes, this bull market will continue. I understand that we have a trillion-dollar deficit, 
And to be quite honest, there's only three ways the U.S. government could fund that trillion dollar deficit. One way is by raising taxes. And, of Mm -hmm. course, it's not politically favorable, so they're not going to do that. The second way is by selling bonds. And, of course, the Fed has done their QE1 and QE2. They've been buyers of bonds. They've been the only buyers of U.S. bonds. China has been selling bonds. So we don't think they'll be able, the U.S. will be able to sell a lot in government bonds. The third way is by printing printing money. So when you print, it's going to be highly inflationary. Well, what happens to asset values when we have higher inflation? It's not that the Dow goes up. It takes that many more dollars to buy the same amount of stocks. So again, we could have a bull market just because of higher inflation. And, you know, the increase in commodity stocks and silver stocks and gold stocks, things like that. But certainly there's an issue around our trillion dollar budget deficit and how we're going to fund that. And I think they're going to print a lot of money to do it. And that's going to be highly inflationary. So asset values will will rise because the dollar will fall. (laughs) Interesting. I hear. So listen, Mark, we're just about out of time, but maybe you could tell people your radio show. How can they learn more about your ideas and how can they tune in, from, especially from Israel? Sure. Our website is winningonwallstreet.com, winningonwallstreet.com. That's actually the name of the radio show. And um, let's see. They can email me if they want more information, wizard, W-I-Z-A-R-D at winningonwallstreet.com, or they can listen to our radio show uh, live uh, through an internet site, radioconetwork.com, R-A-D-I-O-C-O network.com. And, of course, we have our shows on iTunes, so they can download and listen to past shows whenever they want. Great. Mark Mandel, I really appreciate your spending a few minutes with us today. It's been very interesting, and I encourage people to take a look at the website and learn from winningonwallstreet.com. Douglas, thank you so much for being here, and I really enjoy your show, and thank you. Thanks. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.